You may have noticed that it's taking longer to rent out your investment unit right now than it was even a couple of years ago, and that the tenants are not willing to pay the same price as they were happy to in 22 or 23. Is the rental market softening? And if that weren't enough, you might be getting a call from your tenants asking you to disclose your tax resident status and whether you've been paying your withholding taxes. What's going on there? Let's try and find some answers on betterdwelling.com where the publication goes over the recent report from BMO. Canadian renters have relief on the horizon as rents slow. Canadian real estate investors expecting lower rates aren't the only ones who got good news yesterday. StatCan data shows the rent component of the consumer price index slowed sharply in April. In a research note to investors, BMO explained the monthly move wasn't the only data point to indicate a slowdown on the horizon. Moderating population growth and an injection of new supply are also seen helping slow rents even further. So while this could be good news for tenants, if the rents are actually going down, and we're going to explore this a little bit more as we continue reading through the report and through the article, it's not necessarily good news for investors. If the property prices continue appreciating, but the rents are slowing down, that makes investments less attractive. Canada has finally seen rents begin to slow after one of the biggest booms ever. The rent subcomponent of CPI advanced 0.5% in April, with prices now 8.2% higher than the last year. It's not anywhere near falling, but it's a start. Oh, well, at least there is a, a definite admission that the prices are not necessarily falling. So it's like driving in a car and um, saying that, yes, the acceleration is slowing down, but the speed is still increasing. Yes, the prices are still going up, but the acceleration of the prices going up is decelerating. Okay, so at least some positivity potentially on the horizon for renters. Annual growth only fell 0.3 points from March when it had reached the highest level since the mid-80s. So we didn't have anything resembling the current market for renters in the past 40, 45 years. And Greater Toronto Real Estate generally leads the national trend, and it has recently seen its rental market suddenly cool. Rental vacancies in the region are now significantly higher than pre-pandemic, with rents already off the peak. So let's stay on this point a little bit. And as a refresher, the average price of rental one-bedroom unit in Toronto is approximately around $24.50, and it has been tittering at this point over the past year or so. So it's slightly lower, slightly higher, but it doesn't move very much further above or below this point. 2450 is the going rate right now, whereas the average price of a one bedroom unit in the midtown area or downtown is between 550 to roughly 620. So it seems that on the surface, renting a place out would make sense because you'll be making about 5% of cash on cash return on investment. Okay, fine. I mean, not a dream scenario necessarily, but for Toronto and Ontario, that's quite acceptable. Now further, I believe that the investors owning the smaller purely investment grade units like studios or one bedroom apartments will be affected disproportionately by the rents potentially declining. And right now we're not even talking about a trend. We're talking about early indications of where the rents might go over the next six to 12 months. So for one, when we're talking about the entry point into the market, we are talking about the smallest investment grade units, studios and one bedrooms. And investors that are putting money into those types of properties often don't have the staying power. So they are scraping the last bits of money that they have saved up and they are pouring them into those types of investments, hoping to produce returns. And if something falters, the tenant doesn't pay on time or they cannot find a tenant that will pay the amount of uh, monthly rent that they're expecting to collect, things might fall apart for those folks very quickly. Second issue is this is a very competitive commoditized market. All of the investment grade units that were built in the past five years are roughly the same. The only thing that's different, and it's not even the building, it's the location of the building itself. So all of the units are very much the same and people are comparing one commoditized unit to the other. And there are only two considerations for them. It's the amount of rent that they're gonna be willing to pay and the location of the building. From the renter standpoint, if somebody is trying to get into an entry level unit, they're less established in Canada than people that are trying to rent more expensive places like two, three bedrooms or maybe detached houses, etc. 
So there is a high likelihood of renters defaulting at some point. And the last point in relation to this is the mobility of the tenants. So, you know, somebody is getting their foot in the door, they are in the market, they're starting to live independently or they've just arrived in Canada. So this is very much a temporary accommodation for them. They're planning to stay there for a year or so and then their next move is going to be going up, either buying a property or moving into a larger rental apartment. Next thing I wanted to touch on is the profitability of rental units. And traditionally, it has been consisting of four factors, four variables. The first one is the cash flow that you can generate from the investment unit that's coming in on a monthly basis. And hopefully that's something that's going to be covering your expenses, which in Toronto is kind of a rarity. The second thing is the uh, pay down of the mortgage with the bank. So the tenants are paying you their monthly rent and that helps you pay for the mortgage with the lender. Next variable is so-called forced appreciation. You buy something, you fix it up, you install a new kitchen, you change the floors, you update the bathroom, and then upon the sale, you're getting 30, 50, or maybe 100% increase on the money that you've spent on the unit in addition to the regular property growth if it exists. So you are renovating the unit in the anticipation of getting a higher return than the money that you've spent on the renovations. And lastly, of course, is the market appreciation. And traditionally, this was the biggest factor that allowed investors to reap disproportional returns in Toronto. The market has been appreciating very steeply in the past decade. So the point for investors to consider in this scenario is this, even though the rents are not going down right now, we're just getting some early indications that it might be happening in the next six to 12 months. This is something for you to look at very seriously, because if your property is not appreciating and you're having a hard time breaking even on your monthly payments, you're essentially one bad tenant away from kissing your property goodbye and giving it back to the lender so that they can dispose of it at the cost and the price that's acceptable to them. And if your only hope in this case is for the market to rise at some point in the near term, then you do well by remembering this saying that uh, markets will remain irrational for longer that you can stay solvent. If this is your situation, if you have hard time coping and you feel that you're scraping by, it's time for you to consider selling that unit while the market is still decent and you can actually get the money that you've paid for it back upon the sale. Now let's scoop over to the next story, which has to do with renters having to pay withholding taxes on behalf of the landlords, if the landlords happen to be non-residents. Canadian renters is now required to collect foreign landlords taxes and withhold rent. Even the title of the article sounds completely ridiculous. Canadian renters are getting a rough introduction to the country's foreign investor problem. The Can Canada Revenue Agency just informed tenants they are on the hook for any unpaid taxes their non-resident landlord may owe. And um, just to step back from the story for a second, I got a first introduction to the problem about three weeks ago when I got a call from one of the tenants of the properties that we manage talking to me about an article that was released the day prior in the Toronto Star. And the article was talking about a precedent in Quebec where the tenant was actually charged with having to pay an excess of $80,000 for back taxes owed by the landlord that happened to live in Italy and happened to ignore CRA's request to pay the taxes. So the tenant now is on the hook. We dealt with the situation and it, it seems to be getting a lot more traction. There is total confusion everywhere in the media amongst the tenants and landlords so people simply don't know what to do. So let's carry on. In a bizarre decision, the nation's tax authority is telling tenants who pay rent to non-resident landlords to withhold a portion and remit it on their behalf, or they may be liable for the amount with penalties. What the heck is going on? And to complicate things further, one Ontario policymaker warns tenants that have inquired about withholding have been threatened with eviction. I mean, naturally, landlords don't know what's going on, why the tenants are asking for the information that they normally should not be privy to, like the resident versus non-resident status of the owners, whether they've been paying withholding taxes. This is considered private information by most landlords that they would not be sharing with their tenants. So how would the tenant be knowing that? I mean, we would need to establish some sort of a uh, registry of beneficial owners across Canada in order for this to even make any sense for the information to be publicly available so that there is transparency. But even then, we'd be arguing a fairly minor point of how to find out the residence status of a landlord versus the whole fairness of the situation. I don't think this is fair to either landlords or tenants, and tenants are getting a short end of the stick. What is surprising is this latest ruling that requires the payer to submit those funds on behalf of their non-resident landlord. According to the CRA, a payer, in this case a tenant, or agent, in this case a property manager, must withhold 25% of the gross rental income paid or credited to the landlord and then submit it to the CRA within 15 days after they've paid rent. In addition, the tenant of a non-resident is required to file an NR4 tax form. This sounds completely crazy. That was my first reaction when I 
heard about this. I thought that this is totally incompetent to even trying to implement something like that. But then I thought about it some more and I figured this is actually a very crafty and well thought out approach, at least if there is no massive backlash. And that instead of having to hire an army of CRA agents to go after landlords that live outside of Canada, why not try and enlist the tenants at the bayonet point to get that information for them and actually file that on the landlord's behalf along with the payment to the CRA? You know, from that standpoint, it makes sense and it seems to be pretty smart. But some provincial policymakers are actually trying to raise hell over this. In an open letter to Ontario Housing Minister, MPP Jessica Bell outlines the hurdles of a constituent faced navigating this problem. The CRA advised the tenant to withhold 25% of their gross rent if their landlord was a non-resident. Again, to the point, how would the tenant know? However, the landlord refused to disclose the residency status, quite naturally. And when the tenant advised the landlord they will be withholding the funds, <laughs> you can imagine the landlord's reaction, they were threatened with eviction via the provincial authority. The province should direct the landlord and tenant board to deny any landlord's application to evict if the tenant is being forced to withhold rent to pay their landlord's taxes, she noted. Well, at the very least, if there is a federal regulation, a federal agency that's forcing tenants to do certain things, and then the provincial legislation is contravening that and, and, and allowing the landlords not to disclose the information or to try and evict the tenant upon the, them requesting to withhold taxes and to pay them to the CRA, those two have to be put in alignment. Further adding the recommendation, this is going back to MPP Bell, Ontario should establish a beneficial ownership registry so the identity of a property owners is part of the public record and a tenant can easily know if their landlord is foreign or not. I mean, the stupidity of things that are happening with regards to this particular issue is incredible. And why wouldn't the government take it even further? I mean, they've already implemented this for renters and landlords. Why not do it for every other aspect of our daily lives, like going to a grocery store, you're approaching the till to pay for the groceries that you bought, and you start interrogating the cashier about the ownership or the presidency status of the beneficial owner of the business. If you have any doubts after a conversation that the owner is residing in Canada, you can start telling the cashier that you will only pay 75% of the sticker price for whatever it is that you're buying, and the remainder is going to be allocated for your payment to the CRA. And let's see how the conversation is going to go over. I certainly applaud our governmental agencies for already implementing, being, being so forward-looking and implementing this policy for renters and landlords. I mean, surely this will help alleviate the unbelievable backlog of cases within the landlord and tenancy board. Surely it will make the populace a lot happier and it will remove any potential animosity between the tenant and the landlord because tenants are going to be asking questions that landlords don't want to answer, and tenants are going to be trying to pay landlords' money to the government on landlords' behalf because they're under the gun from the government. I mean, yeah, I mean, you get the point. Completely, completely, unbelievably unfair. And in conclusion, with regards to the issue of rental prices stabilizing and possibly reversing in the next 6 to 12 months, this is the issue that every real estate investor should be paying very close attention to in Toronto especially, because one of the chief variables that made real estate investment so attractive in the past two decades in Toronto was the property appreciation aspect of it. And as we all know, since 2022, the property has actually been sliding down. It's not really appreciating. At best, it's been trading sort of sideways. It's neither here nor there. And if you can't count on appreciation and your cash flow is underperforming on a monthly basis because the rents are declining, maybe this is a good time to start looking for greener pastures for your investment money and or stepping back and just evaluating what's going to be happening in the market over the next year. With respect to the tenants being responsible for paying withholding taxes on their non-resident landlord's behalf. That's just a complete mess. This is a disaster. It's not fair to landlords, not fair to tenants. And as is often the case, the tenants are getting the short end of the stick here because they're on the hook vis-a-vis -vis the CRA to pay the taxes if the landlord for some reason fails to do that. Further, it will clog the landlord and tenancy board system even further and made even grind it to a complete halt and it might prompt the property sell off in a market that's already pretty soft so that's about it for this video guys if you like the content hit the like button please share this video with anybody you love and care about please subscribe to the channel and i'm looking forward to seeing your comments and responding to your comments in the comment box directly below that's about it and i'm looking forward to seeing you again next week